Time for communion. We are approaching a very special time, Christmas time. And the Jews were awaiting a very special time as well. And that was the coming of the Messiah. You see, all the way back in Genesis, when God created man and woman, and whenever they sinned, ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there became a problem. And that problem was now sin entered into the world and something needed to be fixed. Something needed to take on the punishment of that sin. And so all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, God made a promise. He made a promise that he would send a Messiah to crush Satan, to make things right. And so he did. He made this promise to Abraham. He said that one day someone would come of your seed that would bless the nations. He made this promise to David that one day someone would come in the line of David that would rule over God's people. And he said in, Messiah, in Isaiah that this one would be born of a virgin, that he would come on this earth as a baby. And so the Jews, they waited. In fact, they didn't just wait. They longed for the Messiah to come. They waited, sometimes patiently, sometimes with the very aching of their soul for the Messiah to one day come. And finally it came, though some did not recognize it for what it truly was. Yet the Messiah was born in the most unassuming way. Born of Mary in the little town of Bethlehem in a manger. Not born in some great palace, not born in some place where you'd expect a king, the Messiah, the person who's going to bless all nations, but came in a manger, just a, a little baby amongst the animals. And that's how the Messiah, the one who had come to save the world, came on into this earth. And really, if you think about it, the Jews almost 2,000 years ago were waiting, and we as Christians are in many ways the same. We are waiting, longing for something as well, the second coming of Christ. We are waiting and longing for Jesus, the Messiah, to come. John 14, chapter Chapter 14, verses 1 through 3 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told, would I have told you that I was to go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And where I am, you may also be. Jesus promised that he would come and take us back to where he is, a perfect place. In fact, Revelation says there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering there. It will be the garden as the garden was supposed to be. And we one day can be there. Jesus promises to come back. He's preparing a place for us. And we are waiting and longing to go to that place to be with him for all of eternity. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 through 28 says, And just as it is, uh, is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time. Not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. We are those that are eagerly waiting for him. Here we see that Jesus not only promises that he is, will come again, but we see the reason why he came in the first place. Yes, he came as a baby, but he didn't come just to be born. He came for a purpose, to seek and save the lost. He was born to die. That was the purpose of the Messiah. 
He, was not, he did not come to set up an earthly kingdom that would conquer all of Israel's uh, enemies. He came to save the world, to bless all nations. And so he came as a baby with the purpose to die for everyone's sin. And this is the reason why we can long for the second coming. We have hope and can long for the second coming because we know as Christians that we are saved. We are saved because Jesus took our punishment on the cross. He died for our sins, spilled his blood when that is what we deserved. And so he died on the cross for our sins so that we may have life, eternal life in him. And because of this, we, are, we have hope. We have hope. And we long for him to come. Jesus was born. Jesus died. We have hope and long for Jesus to return. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus will come again. Let us pray. Dear Father, I pray as we take communion this morning that we remember this hope that we have and that during the season of Christmas that we remember what the purpose of Christmas was, that you sent your son as a baby with the goal that one day he would die for our sins. And so as we take communion, as we remember the birth of Christ, that we remember the ultimate purpose, and that is that he was to die for our sins and that we live our life accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen.
Before we're completely finished, I do have a couple things I want to announce and say. The first is, I think the kids, I know we already did this, but deserve another round of applause. I mean, they did a great job today. And I do want to give a couple of special thanks. One to uh, Sam Miller, if you can't recognize the Grinch here, um, to go to the dedication of putting that on and that makeup, I think deserves a little appreciation. And... Um, <laughs> And then the other one that I deserve a little thanks, I will not ask her to stand because I know she would be mad at me, but is Ashton, who directed this and put all this together, found the play, and did all this thing. She deserves a special uh, round of applause as well. We are so grateful that every year that we can do this and that we have some very dedicated adults that help out with this, and the kids always do a great job. And so we just thank you all that were involved and the kids who uh, came to all the practices and the parents who brought them and everything. That is just great. And we thank you for that. Um, I, like I said, have a few announcements to make. The first is that immediately following uh, the service today, uh, everyone involved in the program, Ashton has asked if you would come back on stage. So all you kids that were in it and the adults that were in it, uh, if you'll come back on stage, she wants to get kind of a group picture uh, together with all the people that were in it. So please uh, don't just run off. As soon as the service is over, all of you that were in the program, come back on stage. Ashton's going to take a quick picture of you guys and get that done. So uh, please do that. Also, we are having a potluck following. If you didn't bring anything, that's okay. To stay anyway. Um, if you don't feel comfortable staying because of everything that's going on, we understand that too. Uh, we won't hold it against you if you choose not to stay. Uh, but we're not doing Sunday school today. We're just going to move into that time. We got done a little earlier than expected when we timed it out. And so we probably won't really start the lunch until about 11, so there'll be a little bit of a hangover, but we'll need that to kind of set up the tables in the room and kind of rearrange everything. And so if you're able to help kind of rearrange the tables and chairs, help with that. Um, and if you'd like to stay, uh, we'd encourage you to do so and have lunch with us. Um, I also want to remind you uh, that this is the last week that you can donate for the Caring Sharing. I believe it's the 17th. Is that correct? The 17th that uh, those all have to be in. And so if you want to take part in that, that's going to people that need gifts and uh, food and different things like that uh, in this area. And so we want to help out with that as much as we can. You know, we did the Operation Christmas child packages that went overseas, and that's great, but we also want to help the people here. And so if you are able to donate to that, there are on that back table by that window, there's some things that they are looking for, a list of things that they're looking for. You can grab one of those, Take it to Walmart or grocery store or Aldi's or wherever with you. Pick up some stuff and bring it back here during the week and just drop it off back here. And we'll make sure it gets to where it's going. And so uh, if you would do that, that would be great. Also, um, don't forget uh, that next week uh, will be the Sunday before Christmas. And then the following week, I will actually be gone. But uh, I haven't even told the elders this, so you'll be the first here. But Lynn Laughlin's going to come in and preach uh, for me. And so you'll get to see Lynn and experience that. He's agreed to do so, and I know that will be a good experience because he's been here not too long ago and preached and did a great job preaching the Word. And so I hope that in two weeks you'll come back and uh, hear him speak. And uh, the last thing I want to say today, if you uh, weren't able to give an offering, whether you're online and watching from home or today, uh, you still have a chance to drop it in the offering baskets in the back or the front, or you can give through going through our website by clicking the blue button at the bottom of the page or the Givelify app and just search our church name. We are so thankful that you came and worship with us today, and uh, you'll be dismissed after the closing song. Thank you. Mm -hmm.